So it's eight, so I'll uh, start my session. Um, my session will be about uh, Magenta 2 console commands, um, some tips and tricks. Um, it's not actually going to be a presentation, but a live coding session. So if you are following this session by just listening in, I'd advise you to actually open up, uh, hop in and uh, double click the presentation screen so you can see the code a little bit better than you uh, would see it otherwise. Um, hello, I'm Peti Uh I'm the CTO and founder of Elgentos. We're a Magento agency based in Groningen, the Netherlands. So what are we going to do? We're going to build a sitemap crawler uh, in a Magento 2 console command. Uh, to do this, we're going to scaffold a console command. Uh, we're going to ask the user for some input, make a pull request, parse the sitemap XML file, render a table, render a progress bar, and do some parallel processing. Uh, it's going to be fairly quick, uh, so I advise you to pay attention. I'm going to switch over the screen I'm sharing to PHP Storm. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, back to this one. Right, first I'm going to scaffold the extension. So for that, I'm going to use mate 2 gen um, so as a vendor name, I'm going to use virtual meetup. I already put that in. Uh, sitemap crawler is going to be the name of the console command. Um, it features all these things we can generate with mid 2 gen We're just going to do the console command, going to edit. It's going to be crawler, and the description will be crawl sitemap. OK, um, now we're going to do save and download module. I'm just going to copy and paste this one-liner. Now I'm going to switch over to Storm. There we are. So this is a Magento 2 clean install. Um, yeah, OK, I deleted those. But... It doesn't matter. Um, Clean install 2.3.4. So I'm going to paste the one liner in here. This will download the generated extension. And we have it here. So I'm going to uh, run Magento setup. So uh, here's a PHP uh, or the bin Magento command uh, actually extends the Symfony console uh, component, uh, which allows us to, uh, instead of typing out the, the full command name, I, we can do shortcuts as long as the shortcut is uh, unique. So setup upgrade can be shortened to set up, uh, but you might also be possible, um, it might also be possible to use SU uh, um, if that's a, a unique enough abbreviation of the console command name. So okay, I'm just going to update it right now. So how a, a Magento console command works is we have a di.xml file, which uh, takes care of the dependency injection in Magento. We have a command list pool uh, offered by Magento itself. And we're going to inject an argument. And that argument will be our crawler. And then we're going to say, this is our crawler uh, class, uh, our crawl classes in here. This is again the generated file by mage 2 gen um, It will, uh, we can input an argument, we can give it an option, and then it will say hello name. So let's try this out to PHP bin Magento. Um, let's see. What bin Magento says at this point in time, it will show us the virtual meetup. Crawler, so it's a bit a uh, long name. We'll fix that in a minute, um, or we'll fix that now. I'm going to change it to type map crawl and run it again. So now it's called sitemap crawl. So if we run bin magento sitemap crawl, and then we're going to pass. PJ, which is the name argument, then it's going to write the output, hello, PJ. 
great, but that's not what we want. We actually want to uh, crawl a URL and return the status code. So I'm just going to remove these argument names, argument options, because we're going to need a target, which is going to be the URL. And we're going to get an option, which will be format. Oh. Uh, format. Hi, Peter. Uh, the, on the chat, there are a couple of people who say that the screen is a bit blurry. So maybe we could try to or uh, or change the, uh, the skin to white or something like that. OK. Um, <laughs> I will turn off uh, my screen so so everybody can see the, the biggest option. Or, uh, yeah, or increase the font. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I can see anything if I'm going to increase the font even more. Um, so let's, how do I quit presentation mode? Where is my bar? Well, it's not operate, upload related. I have a gigabit line here, so that, would, that won't be it. Ah, there we go. Appearance and... Yeah, 15. I don't know whether this has any effect in the presentation mode. Nope. Oh, somebody says it's better, but it didn't change anything, but okay. That's weird. Maybe I can change it to a white contrast. Why does it keep doing this? Team. Let's switch to a light color classic. Yes. Maybe this will help. Okay. So let's get back to the crawler. Crawl, crawl the sitemap. Um, we need the input arguments is going to be the target, which is going to be the URL targets. And we're going to input an option. It's going to be a format. The shortcut will be the F. It will be an optional value. And the description will be format to show output in. And the default is going to be text. All right, so now we want to crawl the given URL. Um, for that, we need to, over here, Yep. So we're going to use dependency injection here. We need to add um, optional variables should be at the end. So we're going to use the Magento curl client here. Initialize the property. And we only want to run it uh, through the curl command if the target is an actual URL. So we're going to use filter var on the target. We want to rule, use the validate URL rule. And so the results or not, we're going to use this curl get the target. And the status code will be curl get status. And if the input of the option called format text, then we want to output text saying status code for URL targets is this code. Let's see if this works. Um, if we do this, uh, okay, syntax are on line 40. Oh, there's a parentheses. Right. If we do this, it should do nothing because we are not doing anything with the, oh wait, 
Okay, so I did an in injection, so I have to remove the generated files because I used a, a constructor injection. Again. Nothing happens. Okay, so now we're going to grab a URL from the sitemap file, sitemap.xml, and see what happens if we pass it the URL. And the status code is 200. So what if we want to output this as a table? Grab the output format. Table. So now we're going to create a new table. And we're going to use the Symphony Component Console Helper table. We need to pass in the output, which is the normal output instantiation, which is injected here. And we're going to set a header. We want to show the URL and the status code. We want to show a nice header title. Color. Side map results. And now we want to add a row, but we don't have any data yet. So we're going to create an array with the URL, which is the target and the status code, which is the status code. And finally, we want to render that table. So we're going to run the command again, but this time I'm going to add that slash format is table. Okay, set header, sorry, headers. Okay, so now we have a table with a nice header, uh, header title and the result. Um, but we only have one result. Uh, what if we want to have uh, all results from the uh, sitemap? So in that case, we want the command to run itself, but we uh, can't work with the table output. So we need a JSON output as well, which would be nice. So um, first I'm going to refactor this. Uh, it's already defined, so I'm going to just change it. and add a format JSON. And this time I'm gonna re change this into the data array, move it up. So we have it available in my else if. And now we want to use the output and write the JSON encoded array. This time we're gonna use write and not write ln because this adds a new line and we don't want a new line in our output for the JSON. So let's try it again, but then use the format is JSON. And now we get a nice JSON result. So first, um, before we continue, we have to, we want to pass in the sitemap.xml. But when we do this, nothing happens because it doesn't pass the filter. So in this case, I want to check, uh, I want to have an else, but I need to know whether the file actually exists. So we're gonna use an else if, and I want to check for file existence here. Uh, to do that, we're gonna inject the file class, file, file. The one we're going to use is Magento Framework. We, it's a framework system driver file and we're going to initialize this property as well and now we can use this file this file and then our target so if the file exists we can now get the uh, we can now do our logic inside this else if so we want to fetch the urls uh, so fetch urls from sitemap from our target, which is now just a file name sitemap.xml. This method obviously doesn't exist, so we're going to create it. And we need to grab the content from the file. And uh, we're going to do that using the XML parser. Use 
this one here, that's the XML parser, but we want to inject it. Sure. And again, initialize property. So the content is our parser. We want to load our file, which is in the target. And then we want to use the XML to, XML to array helper to create an array. Let's see what's in this. So I'm gonna remove my generated files again because I injected new stuff. Pass in sitemap.xml for the crawl. And this will show us a giant array. So now we have to look up what the exact structure of this array is. Here we go. So it's URL set, URL, and then the URLs in an array with the lock. So this is the column we need. So uh, return uh, content URL set URL. But this has multiple arrays. So we're going to use array column to grab the lock column. Here, we're going to say print URLs and here we get a list of the URLs. Yes, great. So now we want to pass on each URL to uh, our own command. We could uh, separate this into our own method, but for the sake of uh, demoing, uh, I'm going to use the process helper by the Symfony console or the Symfony process component, um, which allows us to run uh, commands on this shell, uh, but in a secure way. So I'm going to run a create a new process. Import class symphony. This will take an array as the arguments and you need to split it up in spaces. So in this case, it's bin magento, map crawl. And then we need to pass it the URL. So let's create for each. Yes, for each is our bad, but I'll come back to it. Uh, URL, and we want to have it return JSON. When we run this process, we pass it a callback because we want to do something with the result. Um, the first argument is the type, and the second argument is the actual result. So in this case, if we would output write the result, or for our example, let's do for plan. Um, you see that output doesn't exist because we're scoped inside the closure. So we need to pass in output to the closure so we can use it. And run it again. And we will now have all the results written in a, the JSON format. So I'm going to quit the command because it's going to stop usually. So the result contains a JSON, but we obviously want the array. So we're going to decode the results into an associative array by using the true parameter argument. But now we want to uh, create a nice table for this. So we're going to create a table. We're going to pass it an output. And we're just going to use the same table as we, as we did here. All right, but this time we're going to render it before we start, because these are callbacks. We're going to pass in the table to our closure as well. And then we're not going to use the add row as we did above right here, but we're going to use the append row. And we're going to pass the results, or let's call it data, just to keep it consistent. We're going to add it to the table. So if we run this, we expect it to see a table uh, with all the new lines added, all the results added to a nice table. So this is where the table gets rendered, but then it will give us an error because it expected a console section output. Um, well, it's, 
the section output is actually a special type of output which allows us to re-render certain pages in the console output. So uh, in order to fix this, we need to create a section and we can do that by running the, the section method on the output and passing in the section instead of the output itself. Also, I'm gonna, just gonna make slice the URLs so we don't have to wait for all 65 URLs. Just gonna take the first two. Uh, so there we go. These are our two. So this is a 200, this is a 404. I created this one just to show that it really doesn't exist and it gives a 404. So now we have a, a table. Um, so let's say we also want to have a progress bar. Let's create a progress bar. So a Symphony console component helper. Uh, we need to pass it a section. Create a new section. It's a previous variable, but it's not a big deal. And we can pass it the amount of uh, URLs that it will uh, show. So we're going to move it here. The progress bar knows how many um, yeah, pieces of the, the, the bar it has. So I'm going to start it here, pass it in to our closure, and then run progress bar advance to advance it one step. Start the crawler again. And now we see a progress bar showing up two out of two. So this is all great, but if we have a thousand URLs, we have to wait for each call, um, but we want to do it uh, in parallel. So um, to do this in parallel, uh, there is uh, not um, a package in Magento that knows how to do this. Uh, so we're gonna require grace slash parallel process, which is a, um, a nice package built upon the uh, Symfony process component uh, with what uh, we can create a pool of processes and run them uh, parallel to speed up our command. Um, for this, we are going to create a pool and then add processes to it and then add a, a listener or a callback to that process to have the output uh, be sent back to the main process and update our table and uh, progress bar. So now we have... Uh, the Grace parallel process uh, package included. So we're gonna create a pool. This is a priority pool. Uh, and we're gonna keep it empty for now. So process is already created. This is our current callback. I'm just gonna comment this out for now. Now I have the pool and I'm going to add we have here. So when a process is added to a priority pool, uh, the Grace package will automatically convert it into a run event. And the run event has an add listener uh, method we need to use to attach our callback. So I'm going to use an array map, run it over all processes, which we can get from pool and get all. This is our process. And inside, um, at this point, the process is actually a run event. So I'm gonna add a hint for my IDE, so I have completion. And of course, import this class. So now I can uh, oh, run. Interface. Added the listener. Now I'm going to need a run event because we want to listen for the successful event. That will give me a callback with the run event in it. And here we can get the process through get run and then get last message. This is a result. This is also again the JSON, so we need to decode it. Put it in an associative array. 
So now we want, in the callback, we want to update the table um, we used before. It's out. So we're going to need the table inside these scopes. So this is a closure scope for the array callback. So we need to add the table and the progress bar here. Also here, because this is also scoped. I could also create uh, a property on the class and use this table, same effect. Uh, so we have the table, I'm gonna end the row with the data. And we're gonna advance the progress bar. And eventually we have now set the listener, but we haven't run the pool yet. So now we're going to run itself run the sitemap crawl with the xml again we only have two urls now so i'm just going to increase that to show this a little bit better so that still works but it now uses the uh, parallel processing and to show that we're going to increase the number of URLs is going to 20 and I'm going to set a max simultaneous to uh, let's say four so I have five batches of four URLs that are being checked so if I run it again and in the meantime I open up H dot I filter for a bit magento increases a little bit Yeah, 20. Started running. H stop doesn't update. Mm, yeah, there we go. So there are four. It doesn't really filter either. And though. Now it's done, so we couldn't really see it. Just going to run it again. Those are the first four, then the second four, and you'll see here four URLs, and then they will be swapped out with four others, seen from the PID, PID. And then we're done. So if I just remove our slice functionality, where are we? Move this one. Run it again. So now it's going to do all 56 URLs. 57. In batches of four. And it will eventually finish. So, uh, recap, um, we use the console uh, command functionality in Magento to pass the URL, to validate the URL in itself. And if we pass in a file that exists and it's an XML, it will parse the URLs from it and pass it to itself, uh, which in turn returns a JSON. And then we update uh, our table and our progress bar by using uh, callbacks on the process that is being run through the Symfony process component. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. This is almost all, except for the parallel processing uh, standard Magento. Um, there is, uh, for those of you who really want to do it with vanilla Magento, there is a package that does processing, parallel processing in Magento, but it's cumber more cumbersome than the uh, the, the package I'm using. I can't remember which it was, so maybe somebody can help me out here. It's a parallel. Hmm. Now, I can't remember which one it was. There is somewhere deep in, in Magento, there is a parallel processing package by someone who's used somewhere. <laughs> All right, um, that was it for me.
Um, let's go back to my application window. Let's do this one. Last one. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at PTAB. Um, I'm currently writing a book about uh, console commands or CLI tools in general. Um, largely, it's written from scratch and written using uh, Composer packages. So a large part of it is about uh, Symfony console component and Laravel 0. And um, I'm also going to touch upon creating console commands in Magento and in Aquino and other frameworks. So if you're interested, check out masteringclitools.com. Um, for now, thank you for your attention. And we have another 15 minutes left for any questions. So if you want to chat with me through your camera, then request access. And I might just grant it. And otherwise, I'll just answer questions in the chat. Um, Alexi, are there many useful console components? Yes, there are. Um, I'll give you a quick glance. So we have Symfony console helper. Uh, these are the main helpers. So there's question helper, which um, allows you to ask a question, input multiple choice, uh, confirmation. Um, we have the table and then a bunch of related table ones that can separately style the table and you can create elaborate tables or compact ones or you can do crazy stuff with it. Um, a uh, formatter helper, that's also uh, one where you can use your own colors, your own style, error notices, uh, whatever. It's it's um, it's huge and it's very, uh, very, very um, useful to create these commands in a nice and concise way. Yeah, you can also color the output. So yeah, that's um, that's pretty easy actually. So let's see, status code for URL is. Let's say if I wrap this in uh, a nice, um, well, let's say we have 404. Uh, we can wrap this in an error tag and then close it. So, and if we, oh wait, you can see it now. <laughs> uh, this one, PHP Storm. Yeah, uh, we're back. So if I'm now going to pass it the 404 and I'm going to ask for, Mm -hmm. Does not exist. So now it will show you in an error way. These are predefined. So if you have error, info, notice, success, warning, there are a number of them predefined. But using the um, this one, the formatter helper, uh, you can st you can create your own styles. Uh, with with also with animations and Unicode characters and you can go crazy. Um, mm -mm. Which is the M two point three version you would use as a stable one when writing custom commands for your book? <laughs> okay, um, just the, the latest that this is. The console part in Magento hasn't really been touched in the latest releases, and most of it is mainly based upon Symfony console components. So uh, that's that's fairly stable. So it doesn't really matter which uh, which version you're using. There have been no big additions to um, to this. Um, if if you want to check out um, some cool features, check out Madron um, that uses the same underlying Symfony console component. Um, yeah, to create all the add-ons that Matron offers on top of the bin Magento one. Yeah, sure. Um, I will share the code I just created. Um, I'll give it to uh, Marta and she will, um, she will put it online somewhere. I guess um, I could I could just create a, a gist of it as well. Um, I'll share it. Yeah. So um, I actually, when when um, preparing for this talk, I made a different uh, console command, uh, and that was used to uh, optimize images using P PNG quant with the command line tool PNG quant, um, and that's like ninety five percent exactly this. 
uh, it just uses, uh, instead of a URL and a target, it uses a directory or a file name. So uh, if you pass it the directory, it will recursively uh, walk through it and optimize all PNG uh, it finds. And it will pass a PNG file name to the actual console uh, command uh, from itself and then optimize that PNG file. So if you pass it a PNG, then it will optimize only that file. And if you pass it the directory, it will optimize all of them. Um, this turned out to be a little shorter, so I went with the sitemap XML generation one, but you, it's it's 95% the same structure and the same code. So um, I could also share that one. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted to jump in and uh, confirm that we will we will go uh, we will share the all the recordings that we have for all sessions that we that we had, and we will send it to you uh, via email after the event, probably tomorrow if everything is fine. But as, as we mentioned it before, it's the first time we use this platform. So we will see if the recordings are fine and it's, uh, it's all good, and then, then we will send it out. All right, great. So I guess uh, no more questions. Um, oh yeah, an another nice feature, by the way, of the Gray's uh, parallel processing package is that it doesn't uh, need to have the PCNTL extension. Uh, a lot of these um, parallel processing components rely on PCNTL, which is a process control component uh, from PHP. Um, but that's usually not bundled in any PHP builds, especially not on shared server ones. Um, and the um, the Gray's parallel processing doesn't use PCNTL, so it works on every pretty much every system. Console commands in the future for implementing Elasticsearch. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, implementing Elasticsearch itself doesn't really have to do anything with the console. It's just for, from what we've done is mainly configuration and, and setting up the Elastic cluster. Uh, and the Elastic cluster setting up that is also a, a Symfony console command. I think it's uh, Symfony based. So. Um, no, that was Akinio, but um, yeah, I don't think we will. I don't know what you want to do with a console command for implementing Elasticsearch, but you know, if you find a way, <laughs> go for it. Buy my book and see how it works. <laughs> All right, seeing as there are no other questions, um, thank you for your attention and uh, maybe see you in the networking tab if we get uh, matched.